G'day guys, it's Calvin from the Cartoon Company New Zealand. I've just removed a Haltech wiring loom from Old Yeller and I thought seeing I'm here I'm going to put another one on it. What have we got here today? It looks like a 2500 with EV1 injector plugs and it looks like it's got uh, VAG R8 coil plugs on it in a left hand drive configuration because it's going to uh, New York State I hope I got that at the right place um, it's got some pressure sensors on it <coughs> so this loom is for Brian from Lunar Outlaw Garage it's also got a YouTube channel and he's built a Supra with a SC400 one you see yeah I hope I've got that run right and he's got a grudge match on and he needs more power so step one aftermarket ECU this time a Haltech 2500 was chosen uh, with a bit of help from my mates from XAT Brian purchased the Haltech some other bits and pieces some injectors Hence the EV1 plugs for the injectors. And then, with a bit of help from my mate Travis at a late, I have supplied and shipped direct a, a late manifold and a HTV2300 supercharger kit off to see Brian to give his car a little bit a little bit of boost. So I better get my bum into gear and get this loom tested so Brian can get it wired and sort it. Step one Brian, uh, take the wiring loom, fit the wiring loom to the engine. Easy. Oh, R8 coils. Brian actually found a set of Denso versions. So some good quality. The old R8 coils are a fantastic choice. They're, they're a lovely choice for these engines. Uh, red goes faster. A little bit big, a little bit in your face. Can't really run covers. If you're not worried about that, it's not really a problem um, but there are lots of them that are crap okay straight out because they've been copied and copied and those copies have been copied there are some crappy ones out there but Brian found some Denzos really good price in fact I may be bringing some into New Zealand because they are so well priced and they're a known quality brand keep an eye out for that Right, step one, let's get this onto there and get it ready. Uh, we'll show you a few things once I've got it on there. But my first step is just getting it fitted. things to note the no, the crank sensor loom is long enough you can go down the factory spot down here or we can actually pop it out the side here it's a bit of a trim of the cover and down it goes you notice I left these in they stop the sharp things here getting this loom we've actually got a, an ad adapter onto an adapter there's the injector plug onto that adapter onto that adapter and onto the injector of course, Brian isn't getting that, his, his will just plug straight on the injectors. Now, this is gone on Brian's, okay? This manifold is not there. So the idle speed that's here, it's going to be located back over here somewhere. This is the right-hand side. So we've got an IAC. Mm -hmm. Here it is. 
We've got a remote IAC that can go idle air control that can go on this tube here. I've just used it on another job, another supercharged ute, but we will have another one. TPS, and you see it's long enough to be down here somewhere. Actually, you can go just there. So we've made that a little bit longer. We do have a purge solenoid plug, so it can be mounted if you want a purge solenoid. If not, it just goes to see you later. And we do have a fuel pressure sensor plug. And Brian doesn't have a choice. I am going to send him fuel pressure sensors. Uh, we want to set it up nicely. We want to have all the good stuff going in so it's getting a fuel pressure sensor. Two earths on the back and then this loom here is for the knock sensor loom. I better get his knock sensor studs. Here it is here. Studs, knock sensors, and the loom. And there's the starter motor trigger. So that's the early one, which should fit Brian's car, unless he's changed the starter motor. And he'll have that one. He'll let me know. This loom here is for an oil pressure sub loom. Oh, I need an oil pressure sub loom. I've got the sensors. What Brian's also going to find is this plug. And that is uh, the same as this plug over here. It's, with all these adapters, it's, it's a bit messy. This one over here, look at this. We've got two of these. And this is for air temp one, which will be the ambient air temp. And air temp number two, which is the uh, actual inlet air temp, which will be underneath the supercharger. I better get a adapter for Brian. So he can make a extension loom if required to whatever air temp we're fitting to it. So we can see the loom comes out to the right hand side of the vehicle. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put it over here like this so I can work on it like normal. And then I keep the, the flamey stuff away from me. Taped in. Adapters on. I'm pretending there's a supercharger hanging off the top. Sub loom. Now air temps. So number one is the ambient air temp. Number two is the intake air temp. And I, I think it's going to use a sensor like this. So I'll give Brian an adapter like that. So he can make a little adapter to just plug into the plug we've put on it. And we're running the 2500. So let's uh, plug that in and configure it, get it ready to go. On oh, some vacuum hose. We have some vacuum hose for the map sensor. So the Haltex have got a built in map sensor. Uh, you can use an external, but the inbuilt one is plenty for most applications. On the temp sensors for the ambient, I'm actually going to give Brian one of these adapters that can be welded in. There's a chance it's going to go between the charger and the uh, throttle body, which is fine for an ambient. It can go into the air filter as well. Uh, but um, I've given that adapter so we can weld that in. My one, of course, is actually in pre-throttle body right here. But that's uh, for an NA situation and there's no vacuum. But, and it doesn't have to be welded into place. We've got the coils on, temp sensor wire there, sub loom here. Down in here we've got, it's like a dash plug, so there's a water temp there, and an oil pressure, and a couple from the ECU, and that one's like for an air conditioning, if you want to run an air conditioning wire, down over here. If you're not, then it doesn't get used. That's like the dash plugs, and there's probably a taco wire that can be configured from the old Haltech there. Then we've got this one which is our power supply. And that goes to relays and fuses. We've got a can plug. Same plug as in there. And I think I'll probably put a terminating resistor on it. And this one. This is just a power and an earth. 
um, because if you, if you need a power on earth by your ECU, possibly if you're running high current from that can system there. Got our vacuum hose. And now Brian's done something different. He's going to wire for the relays into the car. So he's not getting one of these. So I'm going to share with him my pin out for this plug and what it does and where it goes. So we're going to discuss that. These are a set of generic relays that I make. Um, this is my template, does link and Haltec. So I've done the same set of relays for both models, both ECUs. And it'll run a 2500, it'll run a 550, 750, 950, 1000, 1500. It'll run a Link Atom, a Monsoon, uh, a, in an Extreme, or a Storm, or a Fury. One of one you see. It'll do all of them. Every now and then we tweak them a little bit. So Brian's going to get this. He's going to need the plug for the other side. One of those. I'll we'll take that there. So he'll get that, and we'll, he's going to make, as I said, the relays. He's going to use the relays inside the motor vehicle. But for now, I'm just going to plug it in. We're going to power it up, and I'm going to configure that ECU. Disconnected. 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 These are connected. Auto speed's not connected. successful oh, yeah when you do two in a row you pick up issues you gotta be careful sometimes with your fingers because sometimes fingers push buttons when they're wrong I'm gonna have to adjust the last one because I had it on a five liter not a four liter I don't know how that happened right I'm pretty happy though I'm really really happy uh, I probably should explain so that Brian knows how to wire my plug. And I'll do written instructions as well. Now Brian used to actually wire big industrial stuff. So I think he's gonna handle this job pretty easy. I probably should put a little care pack in with some extra plugs into the ECU and stuff like that. So let's have a look what we got here. Uh, 12 pin plug. Oh, and I've got my diagrams over here for this. Oh yeah. So this plug here, real, real simple. We start at pin one. Pin one, oh, that's a bit blobby. Pin six, oh, that's very blobby. I hate that. No, oh, get rid of the blobbies. One, and six. Okay, real simple, Brian. Pin one is uh, for the coil power. Pin two is a dash power, which is actually is this one here. So if you don't want the dash power, that won't have power. The next one is injectors. No, it isn't actually. It's it's nothing. There's a blank hole. Okay, so if you want to put other stuff in, it's the next one after that is injectors. Okay, then it's the fuel pump trigger, which is an earth, and then there's the can power, between 12 volts, which is that wire there, which will power up your wide bend. So it needs to be reasonably sizable. We flick it over. 
Shoo. We've got nothing. There's a spare wire. Then there's an earth, which we've made black. And then there's a starter motor voltage going in. Goes to the start trigger. There's the output from the ECU for the fan. A start input. It's not actually critical, that one. If you don't put it in, just disable the one of the digital inputs, which is the start. And then that one is the power to the ECU. And it literally is that easy. Of course, I will give you some writing on that as well. I put some boost tables onto the fuel maps because it's going to be boosted because of that HTV 2300. Um, I'm not going to give you a choice on oil pressure sensors and fuel pressure sensors. You're just going to have to have them. Because um, that's what mates do. Mates don't let other mates make, make poor decisions and not put sensors on the engines that they need. Uh, if you don't have a new EFI temp sensor, please put a new one in or let me know and I'll send you one. And I've got to find that IAC. It's, it's dark outside. And um, I, actually, I actually made a bit of a stuff up. I, I asked for the IAC to be ordered. And we got the little weld on block, but not the actual IAC unit. And um, but that is coming. And you need one of those too for your supercharger. And the temp sensor is my in my pocket because the intake manifold that I've got here is at the house. Because it's very normal to have parts in your lounge, which I sure you know. So Brian, um, we're all good. I'm gonna take this loom off now. And I'm going to do a link loom, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your car up and going and getting it on the dyno. And watching your videos of this loom working in your car in the US. Hope that's been helpful. Talk to you again soon. We'll catch you later.